everyone, welcome to the stream. I hope everyone's doing well and safe amid the outbreak. Um, I c Hi, nobodies. I can't understand what you wrote, but it's good to see you in the stream. So I'm returning to the curriculum app as I've been working on the past two streams as well. So this is the repo. It should be linked in the description below. It's on my GitHub Gwen F curriculum app and everything is here, including issues and I'm good. I'm actually doing really well at home um, because I like to stay at home anyways. But it is a little weird. Um, like I don't go out running anymore or I almost don't go outside at all now, except like on the back porch. Um, but yeah, I'm doing well. So there's a readme with all this information and mockups and stuff, issues about what I'm working on. I actually forgot that when I was working on this in my live streams a couple months ago, I had this dev tasks board. So I'm going to be updating this to be in sync with the issues here. <clears throat> um, this issue is in sync, but a few of these aren't in issues and a few issues aren't in here. So last time we were working on where a, a, a learner can view all of their curricula that they're going through. And we basically made it so you could, so there are these forms. <clears throat> hey, I'm Tranchy. Um, so you can add resources, but these forms aren't hooked up yet, so we have to add that today. Um, these are editable, all of these fields here, and they move a little, but I'm just going to leave that for now. Um, although I guess, actually I'm not, because I think I could fix this by making the icon small for these two things. So maybe I'll fix that first. Because that's low-hanging fruit. We also did some code cleanup last time, which felt really good. So this is, this is a new folder we added, display curriculum. So the header uh, is the part with all these three fields. And let's see, toggle edit. So, oh, these icons are already small. Let's see. So this one isn't small. Oh, that's a button. The icon, where is the icon? Oh, so this, these are the icons. So the icons aren't small. So let me try, oops, let me try putting small here for the pencil icon and small here. <clears throat> okay, so now these, this icon's small and this icon, okay, now it doesn't move. And it fits more in line too. And then this one's bigger. So I think that looks pretty good. It seems to match up with the font size. Okay, so that actually was easier than I thought. Um, these icons show up, but they they don't work yet. And then this one has to be able to add new resources. And then we have to figure out, so when you edit, how do you edit a resource? Um, so I guess this would have, <clears throat> so this would have to turn into either one of these cards with a form in it, or um, I'm starting to think a modal is just easier here as much as we tried the modal and didn't end up picking it. But because edit is going to be weird, it would, might be easier to open a modal for it. Anyway, I'll go ahead and hook up this save functionality first, and then we can worry about, you know, putting this into a modal or not. 
So this is inside the components, this add item form. Yeah, I'm just thinking because there's two lines here, not just one. Because if you see places that do inline editing, there's two inputs. So I don't know. But if you see places that do inline editing, like Trello and stuff, you know, it's just changing the text. There's no link in it. But because there's two lines, and here it's easy to do inline editing because it's just one row and then save. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I kind of want to do a modal and then, I mean, I could reuse this whole thing. Hi, Vinoth. Welcome to the stream. Um, I kind of do want to do a modal. And just put this whole thing in there. And then I could just reuse the form that I'm already using. Um, but first, let me hook up the save. So from add item form, I need to open up um, the display curriculum page. Oh, I forgot. There's a third component here. Sections. Okay. There's a lot of stuff. Um... So if, when I click save resource, let's see what happens. And actually, no, I can't. I was thinking I could copy the logic from uh, this form because I already have a save resource, but this saves the whole form, like everything all together. So let's see. So save new item. Save new item. So I already have a method for it. So this is save new item. Okay, so it's already calling a method which goes up two components to the parent here. <clears throat> And it's not doing anything right now. That's right. So the type here is either it's saving a resource or project. <clears throat> resource or project. And then the section is the section number where the item is being saved. So section one, section two, etc. So let me start by passing in the right section number. Um, Save new item. So I'm going to have to here get section number, which is a number. Okay, and I'll pass in type and section number. And then in sections, I need to pass section number into from sections into add item form now. So, hi Mohammed, how are you? 
Okay. I know it's my app. Sometimes I'm just talking and hoping someone else is going to come up with a better idea. But just doing whatever I'm saying until then. Okay, so I have a section number somewhere here. Yeah, this I. So... Here it is. So add item form. So I have section number equals I. Hi, Mohammed. Oh, there's two Mohammeds. How are you? All right, so I'll copy section number and I'm using it again here, so. Okay, so I'm passing in the section number. So now, I'll just call it section number here too. Hey, Jesse, good to see you. Did I explain why I want to proceed so? You mean why I want to put this in a modal? Or I can't remember which one we're talking about now. So to save a new item, I need to call um, a method in my state. So let's see, in store, I have not state, in my actions. So I have axios.patch curriculum and Oh, awesome. Yeah, I had a lot of fun talking to Jesse and doing that podcast. So I actually, <clears throat> I have three different API endpoints here. I have one for patch curriculum, which patches um, stuff at the top level of the object. I have one for patch section, which patches the sections here and then I have one for patch type and all this basically does is update if you check something off or uncheck something it updates um, so this one isn't hooked up yet patch section so I need to copy this basically I need to copy section slash section ID And then I need to take here. So this is actually <clears throat> curriculum ID. Okay, so this is the one save edit is saving edits if I edit one of these fields on the curriculum. <clears throat> yeah, I'm excited about what Elon Musk is doing. Okay, so this one is for the checkboxes. So I'm actually going to copy this patch type. Actually, I'm going to copy the whole thing because it's very similar. No, it's okay. I was actually thinking it might be fun to be in one of the trials where he implants something into your brain and it connects. 
uh, to your neural network inside of you. But then again, I'm scared. You know, what if it's buggy or it goes wrong or something? So maybe I'll I'll wait till the beta trial. Um, this dot selected curriculum. Okay, so I get the curriculum ID and I get the sections ID which I need. And then type. Oh yeah, resource or project. So there's one thing that I don't need here. I think it's item. Yeah, I don't need item because I only go as far as section. So I can get rid of that. And let me do patch section. Yeah, I think so. And your brain is not something you can get back. You know, if you mess up your brain, it's not like, oops, I can sue for a couple million dollars. No, you're just, you know, messed up for the rest of your life. Okay, so patch section. I need to import this from view X. So map actions. I have patch curriculum, patch type. I'll put it in the middle. Actually, let me clean that up. Okay, <clears throat> so now I'm getting this. So I'm passing in a section ID type and curriculum. So wait, sections, so how am I getting the right section in this one? Section index. Oh, I'm passing in the whole section here. Okay. Oh, because then I'm looking for section type, type index. So I don't need to do that. Hi, James. What? Did, what did it log into? I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, if you look in the description, then I have my GitHub repo where you can see all the information about the app I'm building. It's basically for people who are learning stuff to keep track of what they're learning and be able to view it, update it, share it creating your own curriculums because um, there's so many self-taught coders and people who learn lots of different things by themselves online now and there's so many different resources sometimes it's hard to keep track of all the resources and every different kind of thing that you're learning <laughs> oh yeah yeah uh, so I did a podcast with Jesse who's in this chat and he's been trying out this Neuralink soft this Neuralink I guess it's hardware and software where it reads your brain waves and you can connect it to an API so then we were talking about implanting things in people's brains and brain damage and that must have been when you jumped in one day your coworker will get Neuralink <laughs> I, I think robots will take over most of our jobs before then. And then we'll be playing ukulele under the banana tree and just live happily, do whatever we want. <laughs> All right, so now I'm distracted. Okay, so patch section so that I can save a resource, I need to do I send in the whole curriculum? 
Is that what I'm doing for? So patch type. That's weird. I'm sending in the whole curriculum just to get the ID. And the only thing I'm actually passing into the body is item. So yeah, I don't need to do that, but so here I need curriculum ID, section ID, oops, and body. Skynet? No. Hi Vinath, how are you? Um, right now I just consult and I create content. So creating content is what I like doing, but consulting is what pays me. So I try to find a balance between the two. Um, yeah, right now I got some Python work and I had been working in Vue.js, but I think it's gonna be Django here for a while. Um, okay, so patch section, I'm passing in these three, taking them out of the payload, and then sections body. Okay, so that's everything I need. Now, am I passing in the body? No, I'm passing in the type. So, How do I, oh, because here I need it, resource or project. So yeah, I do need this part of the endpoint as well, because I'm going to have to say if I'm, if I'm updating a resource or a project. So, okay, so section ID type. Hello, Walid. How are you? Okay, so I'm going to have to pass in type 2, which is fine. I was already passing that in. The only thing I'm not passing in is body. So body here has to be whatever's in this form. So where am I? I don't think I'm passing in, I mean, I don't think I'm V-modeling the form anywhere, so I have to pull out whatever's in that form. So, let's see, I have this add item form. Yeah, these text fields aren't being V-modeled anywhere. So let's see, I need a V model. And the thing about this form here too is that it's live in both of these places. So yeah, I think before I do all this, before I finish this function, I'm going to go ahead and put this into a modal. Okay. Well, you don't have to watch if you think it's boring. Thanks. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to get into session storage right now. I'm trying to, you know, finish this view app so it's actually usable. Um, so anyway, so yeah, let me put this into a modal first. I think that's going to, oh God, point of view. Okay, um, anyway, so yeah, I'm gonna put this into a modal first, so I'm gonna grab a Vutify modal. Yeah, I think Vue is a better implementation that's easier to use, and they have the benefit because they follow React 
you know, it came out after React and things like when React Hooks came out, now Vue 3 is coming out with a better version of basically what React did. Yeah. So I think the Vue team does a really good job. There's other things I like better about Vue as well. I did work in React for a couple years, so um, I definitely liked it better than other tools that were out there, but I think uh, Vue, just the ecosystem is a lot better and how they've chosen to design the framework. Like for one thing, okay, so one of my favorite things about Vue is Vue Dev Tools. So when I use React, you know, I use MobX or Redux or whatever I use, I have to have dev tools for each thing and they vary in quality. And sometimes it's, you know, frustrating. With Vue, I get Vue X here, which is an excellent implementation of state management made for Vue. Work very well. It's right here in the dev tools. And I get everything like routing because it's made by the core team. They put it right here in the dev tools. You know, I don't have to have a separate company making the routing. So it's just nice how well everything is integrated in the Vue ecosystem. <clears throat> so what do you think is missed in the Vue framework? Because some of the largest companies in the world are successfully using Vue, like Alibaba and Baidu. All right, uh, modal. What do we call it? Dialogue. All right, so I know I changed, or we had a modal before. Um, but this time I'm sticking with the modal and not doing anything else. I have looked at Aurelia and I talked to the Aurelia team members because they seem to be at a lot of conferences. Um, so when I first tried Aurelia, I didn't think the documentation was that good. It was kind of confusing. But now I don't use it, even though I think it's pretty good. I don't use it because the ecosystem isn't nearly as large as Vue or React. It's just so much easier to find the components and stuff that I want um, from Vue or React. Okay, so I'm just going to use any dialogue actually. using custom tooling. So now, are you saying you don't use a framework now, James? That's kind of hard to believe working for a big company. I know, I had I had a lot of problems with Angular too though. So add item form. So I'm just gonna make this whole thing a modal. And then I'll get rid of this card. And yeah, so. All right, oops. Um, okay, so now I put the card inside of here, which is a modal, so I have to model it to something. So it's inside of here, this add item form. Actually, I'm gonna rename this first to modal, so it's not confusing. Um, add item modal. Okay. And now I'm importing that into here. So I need to change that add item modal. What am I doing? Oh, this keyboard is throwing me off. Okay. So add item Oh, I'm passing it in. So item form. Okay. So, oh, I just copied the wrong thing. So here, uh, 
Um, well, I do you, so I am doing blockchain. I actually live streamed a blockchain event yesterday because our group went remote or our local meetup group did. So I still run a blockchain group where I live. I do some blockchain consulting. Um, it's, I'd say I'd have a hard time. I had a hard time finding a lot of blockchain work in the areas that I'm interested in and not, you know, joining a company like IBM, but I do a mix of consulting for blockchain and other types of programming. Um, so what was I looking for? Oh yeah, add item form and here. Okay. So now it's a modal everywhere. And now I need to V model. So I'll call this open dialogue. Or no, this should be it's a Boolean, so it should be. Yeah, maybe I'll just leave dialogue. Okay. So I need to pass in dialogue here as a prop, whether it's open or not. So dialogue will be a Boolean. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mostly work local, but I did have, um, and just because my blockchain network is local because I run the blockchain developers group here, um, I did have a project out of another city in the US, which was fun. I did that for like four months and got paid in coins for it. Um, yeah, I did, I, and I went to a couple blockchain conferences in Prague and like the Ethereum conferences, but they were too, I guess, too wild and party focused for me. So I've been happy to just kind of network locally and, you know, meet other developers. I especially like working on side projects. Um, this project, so this is a curriculum app. So it's just, well, once this is live, this will help people um, kind of keep track of their learning progress in whatever areas they're learning and share it and, you know, update it. So add item modal. So I have this dialogue Boolean. And now I need... So this plus icon. So I need to find, what is it, add? No, um, plus, yeah, plus box. So it's here, toggle form. Oh, okay, so I already, so I already had a Boolean here, show project form. Oh, okay, because I had, this is it. So I had two different strings because I was saying there was a difference between project and resources. But now I just need a Boolean. So this toggle form method. So, okay, so toggle form should be replaced by toggle dialogue for one thing. And then this show project form should be um, okay. So I don't. I do need to, I guess, differentiate. I do need to differentiate between a project 
and um, a resource still because I'm going to have to, the modal is going to have to say different words, basically. Okay, so toggle dialog. And this will just be resource. So this is going all the way up to the parent, which is toggle. Nope. So toggle form. So it was toggle form. So let me toggle form and change that here to toggle dialog as well. Okay. So now I can't do this anymore, but I will set, maybe I'll set a dialog type. So I have type here. So I'll say this dot All right. After hoisting. Okay. Trying to get caught up in chat, but it looks like you have a little bit of a side chat. So I'll let you chat. Um So here basically I need a dial dialog type and this dot um let's see what do I have on data show resource form show project form do show dialog so now I can just do show dialog but now I have a dialog type too dialog so I'll put these I guess I'll put these in an object so they're together in a dialog object and I'll put type is a string and then I'll put show is a boolean Okay, so I have dialog, type, and show. And now in my toggle dialog, I'll put this.dialog.type equals type, and this.dialog.show equals not. Since this is a toggle, so I'll do the opposite thing of what's happening. Okay. Also, if there's no type passed in, meaning if I just want to toggle it closed, I can say, if there's no type, then I'll just say that it's an empty string again. All right, so I, th I think that's good. And then this toggle, or this dialog object needs to be passed in now correctly to um, sections so it can be passed into the add item modal. So now in sections, I don't need both of these ones for showing the form. So I'm just going to pass in dialog, dialog. And now from From sections, I need to, here's dialogue, show, okay, so show resource and project form, those are done, oh yeah, so dialogue is an object, and Now I need to pass in dialog to the modal. 
the if show project form. So I don't need a vif here anymore, but I do need to pass in dialog. I'm gonna rearrange this. Okay. So, and the other add item modal is here. Okay. Oh, it's this one. Yeah, so I get rid of the VF. And, oh, I already have a dialog. Well, let me rearrange this. Okay, so here. Okay, awesome. And now I need to put dialog and props here. It's not a Boolean, it's an object. And then this V model will be dialog dot show which is a boolean to tell it or to tell the modal whether or not to show okay I think the easiest way to learn a framework is to do like a quick crash course and then just start building something in it because there are so many nuances you get when you're building something that you're not going to get, you know, if you're, um, if you're just, sorry, I'm getting distracted by the chat. Uh, if you're just going through a tutorial, you know, tutorials are great in the beginning, but you can't learn without building. Okay. Sweet. So the modal opens, but it, now it never closes. Or it's not supposed to close if I click outside. All right, so I need a modal header. So I'm going to steal a header from somewhere here. So it's not a component. I wonder if it's a slot. Nope. Okay, so it's right there. Let me... Oh, it's just part of the card. Of course it is. So let me steal that. And this is all in the card text, so I'll put the card header here. And... I can put dialog.type because that's going to say resource or project on it. So here it says resource. Okay. And then I'll do dot type zero. I just want to capitalize the first letter to make it look better. So dot type. 0 0.2 uppercase and then plus dialog dot type and slice it from one is this javascript syntax can it? no i can't do that i have to do dot slice i think dot slice and then that'll be from one onward let me clean this up a little bit all right okay so let me see how that looks all right awesome so resource or I should say add here but then if I update. I guess for updating I'll pre-populate these fields anyways. Okay. So one thing I want to do, one prop I want to pass this is to say that I don't want this to close unless someone clicks a cancel button because I don't want them clicking outside and closing. 
Uh, I think it's bad practice if you have a form in a modal to let them close by clicking outside. Or maybe that's just my preference. So let's see, props. Um, activator, full screen. Good. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, actually, I'm not going to say anything about that. All right, so persistent. This is what I'm looking for. Clicking outside of the element will not deactivate it. So the modal won't close unless they hit cancel. So I'm going to say this is a persistent modal. And now I need a cancel button. So I have a save resource button. Let me do a cancel button. Cancel. Which I'm just going to say is toggle dialog. So color, I think I can get rid of color, all of these colors. Yeah, so that's fine. Um, and then I'll put some, let's say, margin right on this save resource button just to make it look better. So Okay. Um, so I have a class here already, so I'll add a class. And if you haven't used Vutify, one nice thing about Vutify is it has all these classes that do things you use a lot. Like I have a shortcut. I can say MR for margin right of one. And that means for every number here, it's four pixels. So margin right of four pixels. Okay, let me try two, which is eight pixels. And Vutify gives me all these classes so then I don't have to go into the CSS and edit things, which is nice. All right, so, because as, as a non-designer, I really don't care, you know, how many pixels, unless someone comes back in this and designs it for me. I'm just going to do whatever I think looks nice. So, enter resource. Okay, so these need to, these two fields need to be modeled somewhere. Yeah, it is. And then... It's like, do you clear the, if someone clicks outside and the form closes, do you clear it? Or do you, it's not really clear what should happen. So, yes, uh, it's based off of Google's material design. And it's the view implementation of it. There are a couple other view libraries um, that implement material design, but Vutify definitely has the most money and developer effort behind it. It just has so many components and features and accessibility and all that stuff. Um, okay, okay, first I'm going to hook this up to close the form because right now there's no toggle dialog being passed in. So let me put it with the other function and I need to pass it in from here. So add item modal. Let me pass in toggle dialog and see where the other one is. So, okay. Okay, so toggle dialog. Yeah. They're pretty standard across all material libraries. 
which is nice, but then at the same time, we all make stuff that looks alike now. <laughs> Although I guess we did that with Bootstrap too, so. Oh wait, that's not supposed to happen. Let me refresh. Nope, doesn't close. Dialog type zero is undefined in add item modal. Oh, right, so. If it's an empty string, it's looking for a type. So I could check if dialog.type exists. Um, but I think actually in this function, let's say toggle dialog. So in this function, I shouldn't be setting the type before I'm closing the modal. I think that's the problem. Let me see. Okay, so it's still not liking that the type doesn't exist. So I think I will just use a ternary unless someone has a better idea. So I'll do type uh, or just and. So if type is true, show whatever's in here. So let's see. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm so excited for V3. Add space to Oh, I feel kind of weird about that, but maybe that's the easiest thing to do. Um I just put a space in here and then there's always the zeroth element. Yeah, that definitely, I guess if it works, it's okay. Oh, it's still saying type zero is undefined. So let me see. Add item modal. Oops. So I think I, I'm just going to put dialog dot type and here because I don't I don't like thinking about putting a space here where I don't need it. It doesn't make any sense. And that's not going to make sense to the next developer who comes and uses this either. So Okay. So I w um Nope, that's still not doing it. Okay, so um, I don't know if I give a name to the design pattern that I'm using. Um, I like, well, it's not really a pattern, I guess, but I just always try to make everything as small and composable as possible. So, yeah, I don't think I have 
an exact name and partially because the framework view abstracts some of that decision making away from me so there's the recommended way <laughs> yeah so it, frameworks kind of have a recommended way usually for you to use them so it's not like you have to think about maybe paradigms and design patterns so much um, dialogue.type dialogue.type okay so why is it still asking for oh wait so let me look in this function so where I I'm not passing in any type at all so it's undefined so meaning it gets set to this so let me look in the view dev tools and open up my component sections okay so I have the display curriculum and this is where I have the dialogue now it's saying it's false now but yeah, so, because I thought for a second the error was actually here, but it's not. So, the error is here. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe it likes this better. Let's see if it likes a ternary better than what I had. type of mouse event. I wonder, let me try doing a hard refresh. Oh, what in the world? Oh, I see. Because <laughs> that's funny. Uh, yeah, I am passing the mouse event instead. A wonderful JavaScript. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's the one really annoying thing when you can't expect the type. You never know what's going to happen. Um, okay, so. in here some I guess I can fix that by just passing in an empty string why don't I just do that yeah which is also silly another silly thing I know I know I yeah I'm not the biggest proponent of TypeScript as probably everybody knows but it does have its advantages but actually you know what I found there are runtime type checkers in JavaScript there were two libraries I saw for it that seemed really interesting so I need I need to check those out so that way I wouldn't have a compile step yes yeah, sweet that works my goofy mouse event Awesome. So project, resource. Oh, the button has to change for project. So save project, which that's easy. So this will be um, dialogue.type. And this, is all, this all goes to uppercase anyway, so I don't need to do anything. Awesome. Oh, and then the where is it the placeholder text needs to change too so I'll make this into a string and um, 
Um, oh yeah, so. Uh, dial, dialog dot type. And maybe I'll just do the whole thing to uppercase to upper. That's easier. All right, so I, and then I can just take this whole thing and put it here too. Um, oh yeah, I need to tell it I'm passing in JavaScript. I do, <laughs> I guard my time efficiency. You know, the f the weird thing is, I really liked working in Go, which is obviously compiled, and I didn't seem I didn't really mind you know having a compile step, but with JavaScript I'm just so used to having everything instant. It just really messes with my workflow if I get you know a couple seconds of compile time. Okay, so that works. Until a designer tells me otherwise, I'm just going to keep this capitalized in here. I think it looks fine. And now finally, I can hook up the save button after an hour. <laughs> yeah, I never saw Goofy and Mickey Mouse in those characters. I just didn't watch TV growing up. Uh, speaking of TypeScript, there is a great new TypeScript tutorial. Oh yeah, if you want to learn TypeScript, Jesse, Jesse Weagle in the chat there, he just published a TypeScript tutorial on, it's on your YouTube channel, right? Yeah, it must be. So check out his YouTube channel, because it's pretty good. Or I guess it, it's probably really good, but I only, Watched like a minute, I think. So, did you explain how to interview? Oh, okay. Yeah, the links don't seem to do well in the YouTube chat. Um, so if you can post a comment about it in the, I guess, yeah, in the comments, which I don't think you can do right now, but after the video, feel free to post a comment. Um, I totally lost track of where I was. Oh yeah, the save, hooking up the save button. So this button goes to save new item, passes in the type and the section number. And then in sections, okay, so this goes all the way up to components to save new item, pass in type and section number. I save the type, I have the curriculum, which I really only need to pass in the curriculum ID, which is what I'm expecting anyway, so let me rearrange this. Okay, so Section ID, this is about to be the curriculum ID. Okay, so I have ID here. So I'm just going to pass in ID. And this is the Mongo identifier on every object, so I'm just going to use that. Um, and then I need a body, so I need to make a body. Yeah, that is that is awfully specific to say use Lerna with TypeScript. All right, so I need a body, and what am I expecting in the body? Oh yeah, only those two fields. So link 
Wait, link and link. Oh, I messed up. I copy pasted. So what copy pasting does? Uh, name. This one's name and link. Okay, enter resource name and resource link. And then I need to vmodel these somewhere. So vmodel. This was the whole reason I started this modal thing, is to make the vmodel easier. So, okay, so Ionic, Ionic is more like, so I guess the TLDR is I would choose native script view because I think it's the best with the most, you know, hardware API coverage on a phone and there's just a lot that you can do with it and native script is awesome anyways. Um, so I, Ionic doesn't give you the same performance as native script view would and I don't believe Ionic lets you embed native code either inside your application. Um, the thing, I guess the biggest plus with Ionic though is that um, there's a WYSIWYG for Ionic. So if you did Ionic view or any type of Ionic really, um, you could probably code the app a lot faster. That would probably be the fastest way to build a mobile app is anything because it's the combination of you can code or you can use the WYSIWYG or both. But as far as performance and I think user experience, I think native script view would be the best that I've seen. So this V model, so I'm going to add two things onto the dialogue, where is it? So in my data here on dialog, I have type show, and then I'm going to V model a name. And what was the other thing? Oh yeah, the link, which is also a string. So I'll, v I'll use these two for V models. And since I'm already passing in dialog here, I'll just do dialog dot name. And then here, I'll do dialog dot, um, what is this? Link, yeah. Okay. So I think that will work. And now in body, I'm going to do const and then pull um, name and link off of dialog or off of this dot dialog. And then, oh yeah, and then I need to make body. So const body equals name link link Yeah, what new content do you have coming out, Jesse? Okay, so I'm passing in the body type uh I think the ID should be right on selected curriculum. Let me make sure real quick. If I look in the, actually in the component data. So display curriculum, I have selected curriculum. Yeah, I have the ID for it, okay. So I'm passing in everything correctly to patch section and I don't have an API function for this yet either. Oh, nice. Is it a React Native app? Oh, cool. 
type. It's been a while since I did deployments or deployed a mobile app. It is the one that connects to the brain computer interface. Ooh, is that going to be public for everyone to use? That's exciting. Okay, so I have curriculum ID, section ID, type, and I'm passing in the body. Let me make this shorter. And then that's good. All right, so now I have to make sure I have an API for this. So sections slash section ID slash type. So let me go into my back end and server API curricula. So I have ID slash section slash section ID slash type slash type ID. Um, so actually instead of patch, so let me copy this first. Um, and I'm doing these in descending order so it catches the right one first. It catches the most specific one first because otherwise it would just stop at slash ID even if there's a bunch of slashes after that. Or that's what it was doing anyway. Okay, so I don't need a get here actually. And patch, so patch, I don't actually, let me close that. So I don't need a patch right now. I actually, because I'm creating a new, um, a new resource, I should use a post. So, oh wait, this goes back. So dot post and then async function. Okay. All right, so React Native live stream tomorrow. Oh, on the Free Code Camp YouTube channel? Cool. I have a view video on the Free Code Camp channel too, which I guess you already know view, so you don't need to watch it. Um, it would be nice to get to update it when View 3 comes out though. Seems like time flies on these live streams. I feel like I just started and already, you know, it's about time to call it. Um, so I'm pulling all of these off of the URL and then I'm also getting request.body. Oops. I have to clean out my computer. I have too many recorded videos on my computer right now. So, so I can always use input on how it's supposed to be done. Yeah, that's true. And probably even if you're not self-taught. I mean, I can't imagine a developer who isn't self-taught now because even in college, you really don't learn you know, modern frameworks and tooling and stuff. So it's kind of like you learn computer science and then you kind of teach yourself all the other things that we use every day. Yeah, Vue 3 is awesome. So Vue 3 learned a lot from mistakes like Angular 2 breaking everything. Uh, and you know, with the new API, they're still keeping this same options API. So they're, this is exactly the same. So you can use whatever you want, or you can use this same API in components, but they have the new functional API, which I think is really well designed. And you can use either one or you can use both. And if you don't use something, 
it doesn't end up in your final bundle because it does tree shaking really well. So it's not like a feature trade-off. It's, you know, use whatever feature makes sense and then get it out of the bundle, which Vue does, which is nice. And there are some other cool things too. Um, okay, so request.body. I need to pull off name and link. Name and link. And here I'm finding So I'm seeing what I can reuse here. I need to find the curriculum, so that's fine. I need to find the section in the curriculum, so that's fine. Um, I don't need to find the item. Actually, I don't have type ID here, so I can get rid of this. Get rid of type. No, I have type, but not type ID. So, hi Vivek, how are you? Yeah. And Vue does a really good job in taking, you know, what other frameworks are doing well and then rethinking how to implement it and then fixing some of the problems of implementation from other frameworks who innovated and then Vue kind of re-innovates after the other framework innovated, which is cool. Um, okay, so then section type. So I need to save based off of section type. So I guess I can just call item section dot type, which is one of these objects dot type, which will be resource or projects, which is also an array of objects. And I, so I need to push onto the array. So if I have the section already, Um, yeah, I have the section already. So section.type, so this will be an array of either uh, resource or projects, and then I'll have to do item.push. So item.push and then something here. So I'll have to push an object with name and link from that I'm pulling in from the body. And then I save that and then I send it, I'm sending it back. Okay, so I think this will work. Let me just make sure my schema. Okay, so I'm also expecting an is completed one which is obviously false because if they just entered it in, they haven't completed it yet. So I can just say is complete, completed is false. Some watchable variables. Oh yeah. Um, well, if they do come out with it in the next 11 days, then maybe in like two weeks, I can start view three streams, which would be nice. I don't know if I'd upgrade an app like this to view three. Maybe I will, because why not? Instead of starting a whole new project, because I still have this app and the regex breakfast app to finish so they can be usable for people. Okay, so item.push. So let me see if this works. So. Um, let me actually hit this endpoint in my REST client. So I'll do HTTP colon slash slash um, localhost 
8080 and then slash no 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 local is 5000 for the back end and then slash api slash v1 slash curricula and then curricula id so let me just do a get request here okay so that worked and then I only have one curriculum here, so I'll steal the ID and then do slash um, slash sections slash section ID oh slash section ID And then I need to do slash project projects or resources. Okay, so I need to change what I'm doing here because I'm passing that in as singular project or resources. Um, so I think that's in my modal where I'm passing that in. No, 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 it's not. It, um, type dialog.type so where am i setting the type add item modal oh why do i have an extra type here i don't think i'm doing anything with that let me see Oh, I am passing in the string here, so I don't think I need that anymore because I'm doing dialog.type. Um, yeah, it seems extra, so I'll get rid of this, and instead here, I just need to add an S onto the type. So I'll pass in a variable and say type. No, dialog.type, dialog.type, and then okay, there's only one save button, so that should get the right type, and it should be plural, and then here I can get rid of the type, and let me search for the other one, type equals, yeah, get rid of that. Okay, that's cleaner. And now I should be passing in a plural type, either projects or resources. So that. Okay. And let me make sure that happens. So I'll refresh this. Let me open the view dev tools. in my display curriculum component I have dialog so types an empty string and then when I open this type is resource so it should be resources so let me see uh, let me do a hard refresh Okay. Still resource. There's no errors. It's just something goofy that I'm doing. So let me look in here. So toggle complete. Okay, so that's for checkboxes. So I don't have, yeah, that's just a class. So I don't have anything here. I mean, dialog.type. Oh, save new item. Oh, this was my, my bad. So save new item. So dialog.type is singular, and then I add an S to it just when I save a new item. Okay. So the only time it should be plural. Uh, 
Um, I don't know, but that's a good point. So, uh, yeah, I didn't realize that, but I, I mean, let's see. Okay. Um, I can try to make my stream faster with my uh, VPN setup, which I thought I already made faster, but um, too bad I didn't find out about this till the end of the stream. I actually also switched my internet too. So I had, so hopefully it's better now, maybe. Ouch. We lost her. I don't think I can tell when I'm buffering. I can't see. I mean, I don't know when I'm buffering. And in part, I'm using a third party because I'm using e Ecamm Live to stream. So when I'm live, it just kind of shows me the live marker with the time. Um, and it doesn't, and when I'm, when I disconnect, it'll say like disconnected or something, but it doesn't show me when I'm buffering. Oh, is it doing it again? Uh, oh, well. I guess I have to hop off here in a minute anyways. Um, but let me try to do... Okay, let me try to just do one one more thing. So name uh, some link. I'll just say jQuery, and then oh yeah, link. I'll say HTTP example dot com. Okay. So sections, oh, so I got an error back. Um, name is required. I have name. Oh, right. I need a uh, content, oops, content type. application JSON. Sorry. Yay, so it looks like it worked. And now let me run a get request against this. Oops, cannot post. Yeah, of course. So get so did it work? Did it work? Yay! Awesome! So it added here. So the API works. <laughs> yeah. I remember having dial-up too. I use... And you, I used to refresh the screen. Oh, it's not pulling in the new one. I have to fix that. It only pulls in the new one if I go to this page. Yay, awesome. So I have the jQuery one I just added here. So if I add a resource, um, I'll add node and then I don't actually need anything here, so I'll just save. Oh no, it's saying I do. Uh, example.com. Okay. Well, it's not doing anything now. Oh, section index is not defined in display curriculum, save new item. Oh, section index. Of course. So let me find 
section index. Oh, because I'm passing in, I'm passing it in here. Okay. So let me figure out. So I think in here I have toggle complete. And this is the section index, which is I. Infected mushroom music. I've never even heard of that. Healthy mushroom music, okay. Um, okay, so I is for the section. So am I even getting this in the modal? Because I need to be passing in that section index. So here's my modal. Okay, so I do have section number. And on save, I am passing in section number. So what am I doing? So I actually don't need... Oh, I need the ID. Yeah, I do need the ID. So I should change this to section index then. Um, yeah, let me change section number to section index. Section, so just so it's the same everywhere. Section index, okay. And then here, section number to section index, okay. Which is good. Hi, XSMR. Hey, from Spain. Is that, is your name a play on ASMR? Okay, so I'm getting that. And then in the function, section index, sections, yeah, so this should work now. So let me see. Um, what did I have? Node. Okay. Now section is undefined. Um... sections off of this dot selected curriculum. So how come So first where is it saying in display curriculum save new item section is undefined. That's weird. Meaning one of these two must be undefined. I just want to fix this one last problem and then I'll be happy with this stream. Okay, so here I'll just type in anything. Okay, so that's not doing anything. Let me set a debugger. And I'll do a hard refresh. Um, okay, so I'll do node. It's 
Ist okay. Äh. Waiting for it to load. My computer is taking a while on this. Okay, so here's save new item. Let me look at this. So save new item ID is the right ID. Okay. What about sections? Sections is an array. That's good. So, and section is defined. It does have an ID. Okay. And then, yeah, it seems like the data is just fine. Yeah, the, in the US, we're pretty much on lockdown. I mean, this country is kind of disjointed because we have, you know, 50 states and some territories. So it's like every single state has to make up their own mind what they're doing. And they kind of get recommendations from the federal government. Um, and not that the federal government took it that seriously for a while anyway. But pretty much every state is starting to outlaw large gatherings and say certain types of businesses have to close and that type of thing. So I've pretty much been in home. All of the restaurants here are takeout only. So my hair salon closed, I can't get my hair cut. The dentist, I can't, I had a dental checkup. I was supposed to have one yesterday, but they said only emergency procedures are being done now. So, yeah, so you pretty much can't do anything except stay inside. I haven't even been going for a jog. Oh, you did? Yeah, Trump, I think Trump and some people were doing that for a while, saying, oh, it's overblown and stuff, and now they're starting to take it seriously. Hey, PZ, how are you? All right. Um, I was going to finish already, but then ran into this problem. I'm wondering why it's not working. Junk draw coronavirus. So let me ask you, M. Tranchi, what's the goal of your website? Because. <laughs> Focus on curriculum app. Yeah, it's hard. Um, none? Okay. Because I wasn't sure. I saw the form you filled out to get people to hire you or something, and then, but there were a bunch of other stuff on the website, so I wasn't sure if there was a specific goal. Okay, cool. Um, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, so save resource. So it's hitting this. It's getting the right section, section name link index body so let me put a debugger here and run this just to make sure everything possible is uh, doing the right thing okay I'm just gonna type in anything okay so now it's paused on the debugger all right so this is better. So it has everything. It has the ID. Oh, s wait, section.id. What? 
Oh yeah, this is. So that is the right ID. So let me look in payload. Yeah, so section ID, type resources, curriculum ID, body, which is the link and name. So that's everything. So how come this dot patch section, which is an action that passes in the correct payload, is new news sources that aren't mainstream media? Okay. Um. Oh wait, the, this is stupid. What am I doing? These both are undefined. Oh, I know why it stays open because I'm not setting this to close. That's why there's no error in the console because there is no error. It was just me being goofy. Okay, so dialog because I changed these variable names. So don't show it, but I also want to clear the form before it closes. So, where is it? So name and link, dialog name and link. So I want to do this dot dialog dot name equals that and this dot dial dialog dot link is an empty string and I'm just going to switch the order okay so here so when I cancel if I if I cancel the dialog um, I also want to clear them here if I'm just canceling it too. So I'll do if, let me just take show first. So const show equals, no, 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 I'll destructure. So show, because I'm not changing it in any way. So show equals this dot dialog and yeah, that's fine. Oh no, because I'm setting it here anyway, so I just won't do that. Okay, that's fine. So this dot dialog dot show. So if show is true then it's closing the dialog. So if the dialog is closing, then I want to clear the fields. So I think this should work. Yeah, I don't mind. Okay, so let me get rid of the debugger statement and do a hard refresh on this. Okay. Let me see. Save. Okay, awesome. So I think this worked, but, and of course it's not updating right away here. We'll have to fix that next time. But here, If I go into resources, okay, so maybe it's not working at all. Let me see. All right, so I guess I'll have to call it there and um, yeah, and figure out why this isn't working next time but it's almost working and we also put this in a dialogue this time and also my computer's running really slowly so I'm gonna have to get off and clean my computer and figure out how to get the stream working faster next time so I'm going to be streaming again on Sunday at 
Well, let me push code while I'm talking so I don't forget. Okay, so I did add this file. So I'll do git add file. I'm going to be streaming Sunday at, um, I guess I'll do 11 a.m. Eastern time again and just continue this app. And then maybe next week I'll get back to the Regex Breakfast app too. Um, wait, although I would put it under the show toggle. Oh, it takes a while to add a comment. Okay. Yeah, thanks. It's been great just having some regulars to chat with and, you know, not talking to myself in here. So what was I doing? Oh, I already did. I added that one file. Let me uh, do a git commit and I think this is actually live stream number 21 now. I think last time I pushed under the name 19 because I got confused. So git commit dash am code from oh, man, live stream number 21. Okay. Hit push. Oops. And the code is updated. Awesome. So I'm, I'm going to update some of the issues and project stuff. And then hopefully I'll see you Sunday at 11 a.m. Yeah, thanks for coming. Or thanks for... I guess attending the live stream. Yeah, let's let's try to be positive in Polish saying git means something is okay. All right, I got to go. Talk to you later. Bye.